Hi, everybody. I'm here with actor, educator, Josh Krause, who just appeared recently in Jeeves at Sea for us. He's done a number of shows over the past few years, and he's one of my favorite young people. I wanted to chat with him as one of my last musings. So, Josh, tell us your story. Where are you from? I'm from Milwaukee. Um, what? Yeah, raised in Milwaukee. Uh, born in Rockford, Illinois, uh, but then ah. raised in Milwaukee. So this is this has been my home. And school? School. I went. You did go to school, right? I think I did. Did I? Uh, uh, <laughs> so yes. long ago. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. One plus one is two. Right. Okay. Um, uh, I went to Our Redeemer Lutheran uh, in uh, Wauwatosa, and then I went to Milwaukee Lutheran uh, in Milwaukee. Um, and that's where my dad uh, has taught math, like advanced math, calculus and trig and those ones. Um, was your dad your teacher at some point? At one point, yes, he was. Wow. Um, yeah, we just had a lovely conversation I just saw. Uh, my dad for Father's Day, and while me and the rest of my siblings have had my dad in the classroom, my mom has never experienced his teacher persona before. <laughs> and now that he's he spent the last half of this the school year teaching at home, my mom would all of a sudden be like, "Who's in the house?" She's never heard this voice before. She's like, "Who is that?" <laughs> So she'd go up, like, listen at the stairs, like, oh, my gosh, is that my husband? I don't recognize this man anymore. <laughs> oh, and so that's great. So she's experiencing what the rest of us kids are like, oh, yeah, that's dad's teaching voice. That's he, <laughs> he, he puts on this air. He's got his energy shoots way, way up. And then he's teaching and he's on. And my mom was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went to, went to high school at Milwaukee Lutheran, had my dad, um, and it was actually him. Uh, just to get, let's get right into it. It's it's my dad's fault that I'm an actor. Um, it's his doing. You got to blame somebody. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I wanted to be an NBA player, um, and my dad cut me from his freshman boys basketball team and said, "You're not going to be an NBA player. You can like basketball, but too not fast enough. I'm not good. I'm not. I don't have." the right set of skills uh -huh. so, but you do have the right set of skills for for acting why don't you try it for the fall play and i did got my first role as smee in peter pan mm -hmm. and it's been acting ever since that's been my life um and then went to school for it i went to cardinal stretch university uh, in glendale uh met my wife there uh, convinced her that uh, me being an actor was okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, then uh, took a year out of school, tried out for some things, got really scared of the real world, uh, and went back to school to get my master's in acting from Indiana University. And then it was actually, uh, it was for those auditions for grad school that you and I really got to know each other, Michael. Um, right. Uh, you were my coach uh, for my uh, my ERDA auditions. Um, what what that acronym stands for, I could guess. Uh, University and Residence Theater Association. Uh, association. Sure, or, that sounds yeah. much better than what I was going to say. United <laughs> Rhinos Take America. I don't know. No, uh, that ain't it. That's not. That's not. Swing it a minute. But uh, so yeah. How, how did you find me though, Josh? I don't remember that. Did someone I, recommend me or had? I, I had worked with Ray doing some um, some of their school tours that they do uh, through Skylight. Um, and then when I was starting to ask around, um, he said, well, I think Michael does some of that. He doesn't really do that all that much nowadays, but why didn't you ask him? I remember I wrote, I, f I think I found my email that I sent to you. Um, and it was real, real sheepish, like, Hi, Michael. My name is Josh, and I'd like to get into grad school, but I don't know what I'm doing. Help me, please. Um, yeah, and we met a few times, and uh, I remember the piece that you gave me. It was Willem from, um, do I remember the piece? Uh, Willem from. From the nerd? Uh, what's the Kenny Lonergan play? Oh, uh, it, um, Lobby Hero. 
the other one. This is this is our youth. This is our youth. So, right. What was his? I'm not sure his name is Willem though. No, that that <laughs> is the nerd. What am I thinking of? Anyway, him, that guy from this is. Our I youth. remember now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was kind of that. That's what launched me into this the next level of my career, getting to know you in those one-on-ones. Um, and then when I was coming out of school, I was starting to reach out and I reached out to Artist Ensemble Theater, Richard Rather down in Rockford. My <laughs> circle came all the way back around. Um, uh, reached out to him and then reached out to you and um, landed my first uh, role with Milwaukee Chamber Theater uh, because of, I think it's because uh, you like to take chances, Michael, and you are, the email was something to the effect of, all right, Josh, we'll have you audition. Molly Rohde is going to be directing this thing. And maybe like a day later you wrote, or maybe the same day you wrote a second email saying, you know what, Josh, we're going to forego the audition. If you want this role, it's yours. And it was Pip and Great Expectations. Um, and I remember that was such a huge confidence boost of, I, okay, great. I, I think I can do this thing. Um, and it's just, yeah, that's been just one open door after another and connections and have really started with you, Michael. So I want to start, we're, we're, we're a few minutes into this thing, but Michael, <laughs> thank you. You're not going to. Ask me questions. Oh, okay. No, I, I only, get, I only get one and a half questions. I'm going to save them <laughs> for another time. I get one and a half, save it. <laughs> so, Joshua, after grad school, so how long after that was Great, Expect Great Expectations? And when did you get married in that whole series? So While you were still in school? Mm -hmm. Got married after my <clears throat> second year. of. It was a three-year program at IU. Uh, got married after my second one. So I spent my first year of marriage away from my wife. Uh, she was here in uh, Menominee Falls in Milwaukee area. Uh, she works as a software designer. She is a user experience specialist. Um, and her career path, we can talk about her career path and uh, for, and there'll be another half hour. Um, but uh, we've spent so much of our relationship apart that this, um, this quarantine, this, this stay home thing is our first actual set of, I think this is now going on, was March that we started this. Mm -hmm. I think this is our first set of three solid months, three, four months of just being together. Um, I'm like, oh, is this, is this what like relationships are like? Oh, this is great. <laughs> we should do this more often. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we've been spent. We we spent our first year of marriage apart while I finished grad school, and then uh, Great Expectations was spring of twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. It was your 2015, 2016 season, if I remember. Um, so it was that April, and I graduated. Or uh, no, what time? Graduated. Gosh, in, you're too young to have trouble with. I don't. It's all right now. Being like this, it's been great these three, four months at home. But it's all just one beige color of time and space. <laughs> and, uh, then. Uh, so yeah. great expectations inadvertently led to you working at APT, isn't that right? Uh, it, Tell me it, about that path. Uh, it's so much of this career, maybe all of it, uh, has to do with who you know at the, and, and when you get to know those people. Uh, APT, uh, I, uh, from Great Expectations, that led me to get to know people at uh, uh, Children's Theater of Madison. And then while at Ch uh, Children's Theater of Madison, I got to know Jim Ridge, who was directing the production. He then bounced my name over to Kerry Cannon, casting director for APT. And two weeks before their season started four years ago, I got a call from Carrie Cannon um, after I auditioned for her. And she's like, this is, thank you so much. Um, uh, and I heard back that uh, uh, 
all their spots were filled for the season, but they're going to hang on to my name and they'll get back to me when another opportunity arises. So I was fully prepared not to go into their season 2016. Yeah. Um, two weeks before their season starts, Carrie calls me and says, we've had an actor drop out. We would like to uh, have you join us. So all this, all this um, uh, career is just being ready um, because the opportunity is going to come, that door is going to open and the people, you know, are going to present those opportunities, um, uh, getting to know you through Ray and taking the chance to, um, introduce myself to you, taking the chance to, uh, introduce myself to Carrie Cannon through Jim Ridge. And that led me to my first summer at American Players Theater and, um, regardless of the cancellation of this past season of APT, this was my fourth consecutive year working with them all from one production and getting to know Jim Ridge a little bit and him just bouncing my name to carry when someone else fell out. And it's like, it's very, had very little to do with me because Maya, what were my audition pieces for her? They were okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were okay but it's more about who you know and when you know them and oh it's just and people believing in you i think that that's part of it too yeah sometimes the who you know makes it sound like you're at parties shaking a lot of hands oh, and i hate parties michael i hate them. <laughs> i like standing in a corner watching people at parties but the, the, the small talk that's why i like to have rachel with me because then i go hey would you like to meet my wife? She has a very interesting career and then we get to talk about her I, I, talking about me is like Ugh. I don't know. Um, happy but to do it for you, Michael. It's a combination, I think, of um, doing good work, being someone that is trustworthy and generous and open. And I think that's how word gets out that you're someone that people might want to work with. I think auditioning is such a cold, unfortunately, uh, weird experience. It's hard to really make an impression in an audition but when you do good work it leads to more good work i think mm -hmm. i agree uh i've actually been uh trying to my relationship with auditions has always been so yeah i would say cold i, I don't like them it feels so strange but then this um these past few auditions i've been feeling a little more comfortable in, in my for me where before I would be trying to choose um, um, or like to be or not to be Hamlet speeches or like these heavy lifting shapes uh, grit and I'm, I can do the, I take risks. When in reality, it, uh, this is, it's speed dating. Like I, I'll sh you'll get to know that I take risks when I'm in your in your rehearsal room. So for now, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give myself a break, and I'm gonna do a piece that I like, and it's just easy to get into. Um, so all that came from auditioning and feeling like each audition was just getting was just so hard, and I felt so uncomfortable, and discovered that oh, that's just that's my that's the tr pieces I'm choosing. Why am I doing that to myself? Why am I making this such a huge event? Well, you're right. It is like speed dating because you get a time limit. Yeah. It, it isn't a chance to really court someone no. to find out if you want to work together or date. Yeah. It's, it's a, this very fast process of you're in, you're out. You either nail the moment or someone catalogs. That's someone I would like to know more about and maybe bring them back or remember them, file them away somewhere. But it really, really the, getting the opportunity to do the work where you can move forward. Yeah. So uh, APT, talk a little bit about your first summer. How did that go? Uh, it was great. I was a part of their apprentice program. Um, uh, <clears throat> better. I was, uh, oh, I'm not better. Hang on, Michael. <laughs> you have some water there, Josh? I do. Wow. I do, too. I'm going to take a sip. Whew. Granola. Don't have granola before you start doing a 
an interview with Michael. Right. Well, hi, Tweak. Okay, I think I'm better. Uh, first year with APT was a, um, I was with their apprentice program and I got to uh, take uh, classes and courses with their voice and text um, faculty um, or their staff um, and some of the directors and some of the actors on their core company. Um, uh, I got to play, uh, my favorite part of my first year was being introduced to a new level of listening and a new level of uh, musicality to speech in order to get um, uh, it, it across, in order to get uh, even uh, Arthur Miller across, getting to hear these actors who've been at this thing, who are now masters at this craft, working on this thing 30 some years plus, um, tuned my ear uh, in a whole new way. Uh, so looking at my own work in this new way and, and how, uh, how to use language to tell a story um, in an outdoor space to a thousand people and an indoor space to a couple hundred. Um, and I would say I didn't really, um, getting to come back to my first show after my first summer at APT was Miracle on South Division Street with Milwaukee Chamber mm -hmm. um, and with you and getting to flex some of the muscle that I'd gained at APT in our little black box at uh, MCT was just life-changing. Getting to notice that, oh, that like this, the learning isn't done. I graduated from, I have two different degrees, but the learning is not done. I have every opportunity, uh, every production, every rehearsal is another chance to practice the craft and practice, um, uh, uh, practice being wrong and getting to work with new directors that pull and, and shape us, uh, shape the actors in new and uh, exciting ways. And um, that was our first opportunity to get to work together and getting mm -hmm. to um, uh, re reconnect since uh, it had, it, it had been a couple of years since you and I got to work in a room together where you were my, you were my director. Um, and just getting to find uh, Jimmy with you um, and his little, um, in his little, uh, uh, his screwdriver and working on those plugs, which by the way, every time I unplug my toaster, I hear Jimmy in my head by the plug, ma, not by the cord, by the <laughs> plug. Every time, honestly. Um, yeah, and getting to getting to take the things I learned at APT and bring them uh, to um, Milwaukee Chamber Theater, um, and Jim Ridge talked about it too when he gets to come over and he worked on the few, uh, and now all of a sudden he's it's ninety. We get to work for ninety people in our little black box, and the the really minute details that you don't necessarily get to get to rely on. For APT's outdoor stage, you've got to reach out. You've got to hit that back wall. But chamber theater, you get to be intimate and you get to make smaller choices because it's more, the audience is right in your lap. Um, it's yeah. wonderful to have that range, to have oh. the opportunity to explore how we create the same sort of art form, but very differently. Oh, yeah. In different muscles, different strengths. Yeah. At APT, I, I remember you doing Midsummer. Was it Midsummer where you played one of the fairies? Yes, but yes. I, you were unrecognizable in it. I don't remember exactly how much was makeup, how much was prosthetics, how much was costume. What year was that? Was that your first year or your second year? That was my first year. That was, that was 2016. Yeah. That was 2016 that I did that. I was mustard seed. I had this big, we all had cowls made, uh, mm -hmm. made like nylon, that so our faces would, would poke out of them, then our faces would be painted uh, with what was called fairy mud. And it was like a combination of like purple glitter and, um, and uh, some mud, 
mixture that they made for us. Um, then I had this big like seaweed wig on my head. Um, and yes, that was a year I got to, uh, I discovered that um, while I don't play an instrument, I can sing, but I don't play an instrument, but my body can keep time. I can keep time really well. And I never knew that about myself, but in this production of uh, Midsummer, uh, all of the fairies, this chorus of fairies, we would play drums. Um, and with the help of Amina Kaplan, um, our choreographer and our uh, drum captain, um, she taught us all how to uh, uh, drum together where some of us were on just uh, uh, holding quarter notes while everyone else was riffing off of that. Oh, it was so, so fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and like skills that, like I, uh, Pam Krieger was one of our teachers at uh, Cardinal Stretch and um, while I could move well, it, I'm not, I would not call myself a dancer, but she could always rely on me and be like, she, she knew I could move across the stage um, on the beat. And so like, like we could rely on that for me and it was great. Um, yeah, no, but that was just a whole new world um, and getting to, getting to, one of the things, I, I don't know about you, Michael, but one of the things I like doing when it, uh, comes to character creation is finding ways to disappear into the character. So now, so if I can trick people that know me well into having to do a double take and go, Oh my gosh, that's Josh. That's my favorite, uh, getting to disappear into roles. And um, that's what's wonderful about American players theater. <laughs> you, you're doing repertory. So you, you get a chance to play a variety of different roles each summer. And it gives you that, chance to explore different aspects of yourself and it, it challenges you in many many ways but it also gives you this wonderful i say opportunity to explore a new part of yourself to, to be somebody very very different in each of the shows okay so here's i'm going to sneak in because I, yeah. I, I, i'm watching our time here's my one question oh what role michael would you say you felt like you had been able to uh, disappear into the most in your career? Oh gosh, that's hard. And the one that immediately comes to mind is uh, The Boys Next Door, Arnold Wiggins. Just because I really understood him emotionally, um, but he is a very different human being from myself. I always like to think of how we combine ourselves with a character and I think of it <laughs> as a, Sometimes we're closer to mm -hmm. ourselves on the spectrum. Sometimes we're very, but we go much further into playing a role and a adopting new mannerisms. Um, that's the one that comes to mind. I'm sure there have been many on that vast spectrum of close to me and further from me. But for some reason, I see him, I, I visualize him as different from me. I'm not sure others would, you know, they, they probably, may look at it and say, oh, that's just like Michael. Mm -hmm. But because he's a very different, uh, very different being, I was able to adopt different mannerisms, different speech patterns. Yeah, cool. that was my I, one. I, I love that. I love that spectrum. Yeah. I love what, you, what you're saying about playing roles. I think sometimes it's fun to play smaller roles where you can really disappear because you don't have to rely necessarily on yourself as much as your imagination. Mm -hmm. You can just escape into a whole different fantasy world. Mm -hmm. um, keep talking about your, I would love to hear a little bit, how are we doing on time? Okay. I want to hear more about your uh, exploring being a teacher. Did you do some in grad school? Did you start there? I uh, did not start there. Uh, I started before grad school. Uh, um, I was teaching for uh, for the Milwaukee Repertory Theater. I was teaching for Sunset Playhouse. And it was uh, through, um, I would say, uh, Erica Navin has a lot to do with my love of teaching now. Uh, she is the education director at Sunset Playhouse. Um, Erica's great. 
and I done I done a little like some like summer camp stuff with the rep and with Sunset, and then uh, Erica uh, had this big had this big opportunity uh, to do a week long camp where I was going to be teacher, director, mentor for fifty some kids, and I would be working uh, uh, with uh, uh, I cannot remember Sarah's last name. But one of the other teachers, Sarah, uh, she and I would uh, spent uh, that summer uh, teaching a brand new musical using like jukebox music um, mm -hmm. like from the uh, 40s and 50s, uh, the story of Aladdin, uh, but with this new twist of a thing using uh, jukebox music. Uh, and it was the most terrifying thing I've ever done. And it was because Erica was like, I trust you. And she just sort of pushed me into the deep end of this big thing that she's like, it's gonna, it's just a week. It's a week of your life, but it's going to test you. And it did. And it made me really fall in love with, um, it made me fall in love with education, um, which then helped me choose Indiana University as my grad school uh, because it had this teaching aspect to it. Um, that I'm not just there to study myself. I'm there to also learn how to teach the thing of acting. Um, so I spent the three years there. Um, and of those three, of those six semesters, I taught for five of the semesters. The first semester we would learn um, basic curriculum building and basic classroom management. And um, then it was just, okay, go to it and we would check back every single day and every single week about how things are going and um it, it it helped me i think it's helped having teachers in the family getting to see my dad teach and now all of a sudden i'm in a classroom so at first i emulated him mm. uh and i i still do there's a there's a sort of goofiness in my teaching where i leave room for play um uh, which is what my dad finds play in math. I don't, but he does. But and so he tries to bring joy in this world of mathematics and and rigor and logic. It's always going to come to this answer, but how you get there is so much fun. And here's how. So he he uh, crafts his lessons about the journey to the answer, um, which I I like to emulate when it comes to. Well, there isn't just one answer for this character. We have the language that helps support all of these different choices, and we have to stay within the boundaries of this. And so now, let's play. Let's find. Um, let's find this human being that uses these words. And um, it was through. Uh, it is still through constant uh, trying something out that I, I really like physical work when it comes to character creation and creating moments on stage. Um, and uh, doing, uh, I think my favorite type of teaching is one-on-one -on -one coaching. I like teaching a classroom. I like classroom, um, the energy a classroom gives you, but getting to mentor just one individual that has come to you and, and has said, I really, really like doing this, but I'm a little lost. Can you help me? Um, Something about that is uh, having a one-on-one -on -one connection. I've been working with the student now for, I think, three or four years, um, getting to watch her grow and, and having her go through aha moments that I remember having. It's like, oh, you, you, was that, you had the thing, didn't you? Oh, okay, cool. So, um, Yeah, I feel yeah. that way too. I feel like when you've got time to really invest in one person, you can take it further. Mm -hmm. The only thing you're missing, I feel, is uh, being able to compare. If you have five students, you can say, now see what they're doing here. Right. How do you observe what is working, what is not working? How would you advise? But I do think, in general, teaching is better with smaller groups. The smaller, the better. I think tutoring is the best form of teaching because you're really giving someone all your attention, all your knowledge. Do you learn more about yourself and your own craft and your own ability to create through your teaching? Oh yeah, it's been it having. Do you have aha moments yourself? Absolutely, and um, some of those aha moments are remembered aha moments of of some simple truth about acting that just 
that I remember um, that I've sort of let go the wayside or haven't really, mm -hmm. I haven't taken time to um, uh, give it its full due. Um, my uh, example, uh, my, my student, um, she uh, found a really cool, a broad brushstroke attempt at this one monologue. So she, under, her instincts understood, okay, this monologue is, um, is heavy, it's emotional. Um, there's grief in this monologue, but it had no point. It wasn't specified enough. It was just, she knew this was the color it needed to be. Um, and then I, I asked her to find out who is this person in the room with her um, and to just specify physically in the room by using like a light switch or like a doorknob as the person that, that there is a person in the room with you and maybe you're speaking these words for them. So it isn't just general words, they're for them. So she tried it again and it focused the monologue a little bit better. It gave it more energy and more urgency. Uh, it felt less false to her. She was discovering the words as she was just practicing it. And then we specified that individual even more and it became less of, it became more of, okay, that's your best friend. You mistake them for your best friend, but you, that doesn't matter. They're your best friend. Mm -hmm. So then she did the monologue one more time and found even more, uh, uh, even more within the language. And I, as the listener to the thing, heard more of it because it became so specific. There was action behind it. We never talked about what's your verb here. It just became about trying. She had a very specific person in mind, trying to talk to that person uh, and giving this these words to them lifted the whole thing up into a new stratosphere of work that she hadn't reached yet. It was really cool. So that reminded me of when I'm lost, when I'm working on my stuff, which I often am, when I when I reach a rut, when I'm like, I'm not sure what I'm what this is, what these words are doing, why I'm speaking these words. It reminded me, right. So much of the the trouble that I find with my own work is I don't know who they're for that just becomes no nah, these are just words rather than words for that person there right sending your energy and your thought for a specific reason to that specific person yeah so yeah that's and it just keeps it keeps happening and, and we always will which is why I, I like having teaching education as that uh the other thing i've got holding hands with with acting i find the most uh it also gives me another sense of service. I'm serving someone else. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much of theater sometimes feels you, you've come to see me. Um, and uh, getting to have the relationship between teacher and student, transferring that energy to theater that we're here uh, we can't exist without the other. The audience doesn't exist if there isn't a play happening, and the play doesn't exist if the audience isn't there to see it. Right, um, right. It's not self-serving. It's all communal. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, we're we're um we need to wrap up. Um, I would love before we part to hear what your hopes are for the next few years. Uh, ideally, a season at APT, and I understand they're going to just take this summer and move it to next summer. So what's in store for you there? Uh, what was your season? What are you up to? What I'm up to coming up at APT will be, um, I'll be playing uh, Adam in Rough Crossing, uh, the Tom Stopper play. I'll okay. be playing. Um, I love that play. Me too. If the full transfer happens, which I, I believe it is, I'll be playing uh, Moth in uh, Love's Labor's Lost. Ah! Uh, yeah, he, he's one of the constables and he's this sort of, um, he's this grouchy old man, uh, not old man, he's this grouchy guy that doesn't have love in his life. So he's just sort of taking it out on everybody else, um, which I love. So I get to work on some Shakespeare, which I hadn't done before. And I think I'm playing uh, a few minor roles in Julius Caesar. Um, so I get to have some Shakespeare in my belt now and uh, moving up from, mustard seed to uh, having some 
uh, getting to work on some actual Shakespeare and lifting that up for our audiences to hear. Um, Great. Yeah. So that's, that's over there. That's, so that's the next summer. But in terms of the next few years, the next 10 years, five years, yeah. what do you hope? Do you hope to continue balancing the teaching with the acting? Do you, uh, would you like to add more to it? Uh, for, um, I would like to keep balancing it. Um, uh, these strange times that we live in nowadays, I, I've asked myself if I'm, I mean, there are more opportunities to be a teacher right now than to be an actor. Um, and could I forego acting for a while to just teach? And, oh, that hurt my soul was just like, no, nah, no. Nah. Like we like teaching Josh, but we're not gonna give up acting. So I know I'm gonna keep the balance going. I need acting in my life. Um, uh, eventually years down the road, um, I can see myself having some sort of uh, uh, professorship somewhere at a school. Um, I can see myself getting into directing here or there. Um, it also has everything to do with uh, as I continue to find my role in supporting um, uh, our uh, black directors and our black actors um, uh, in our uh, Latin X actors and uh, anyone um, that is not a white male, I'm trying to find my role of just being, of being a support. And uh, at the moment that's sort of shaken up a lot of my, it's like, well, I could just do anything. I was like, well, yeah, but should I? Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking to just be a, continue to be a supporting player and continue to find what keeps my soul singing and alive um, and leaves all the room for other souls to sing along with mine. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Great Thanks, to spend time with you. Take care. You too.